Hello, Marcel here and today I will show you how to use guide channels in Ornatrix for Maya to create a procedural haircut almost without using any freehand styling tools. Guide channels in Ornatrix are essentially attributes which can be attached to guides at any point in the hair pipeline to drive various parameters in Ornatrix and you can define as many of them as you need and they can be adjusted at any point of the modeling process. So let me show you what I mean. First I'm going to select the scalp in this mesh provided to us by Sergey Krikola and I will add a fur ball groom to it to create a nice little starting point for our hairstyle. I'm just going to disable the hair from guides node for now so we can see our guides and go into the guides from mesh node to change the number of guides to a lower number to make them a little bit more manageable. So I'm going to first change them to be more regular like this and maybe bump up the count just so we can define more local definitions in the hair. So now I'm going to turn my hair from guides node back on and go into my edit guides shape and the first thing I will adjust is the length of the guides. So I want to give this guy a little mohawk. I want the hairs down the middle to be longer than the other hairs on his head. So I will add a length modifier right above my edit guides shape to control the length of these hairs and by default the value is one so it does nothing but I can adjust to make this bigger or smaller. Instead of changing this globally what I want to do is to change my length on the side of the character while leaving the hairs in the middle the same length as they currently are. I'm gonna go back Back to my edit guides shape and I might turn off the show end result just so we can see the uh, guides at this point in the stack. I will go into my root mode, expand the channels drop down. Here we can see that we only have a default selection channel which is always present for the guides. I'm going to add one more channel and I'm going to call it the length channel. So now, now I will go back to my length node and here we have a little value channel drop down where I can select my length channel and the hair is immediately become very short and the reason for this is because the length channel has been filled with values of zero and it acts as a multiple for this length value over here. So essentially all of our hairs are now zero length. I'm gonna go back into my edit guide shape, go into the root mode and I'm going to select the hairs down the middle of the character. I'll use the control button to deselect some of the guys that I don't really want to be part of the selection and maybe I'll control shift select some of these guides to add them into selection. Uh, I will select the length channel here and adjust its channel value to a higher value. I will set these values to 1 and let me turn on my show end result so we can see that these particular guides now have a value of 1 and the length will be 1 for them. I want to hold on to the selection so I will use the create sets and the quick select set option to create my mohawk selection. Invert this selection right now and for the rest of the guides I want them to be a little bit shorter but I certainly don't want them to have a value of 0 so I'll adjust this slider over here to set the length to something that I like more. Note that now we can always go into the select menu and use the quick select sets to select either our mohawk or the other hairs back as we need them. One other way to adjust the guide channel values is to be able to paint them directly onto the hair. So I'm going to go into the brush mode and use the paint brush as well as set a value that I want. Let's set it to completely black to make the hair shorter and now I can just paint directly onto my guides to make specific hairs shorter and make the other hairs longer. So for example, I can shorten my mohawk a little bit down the back and give it a nice shape that I want. If I wanted to make it longer again, I can always set this value to 1 and then it's going to paint a white value for these particular hairs. So let's say I'm sort of happy with the length and now I want to add a little bit of curling to my hairs. I want some bigger curls defined for the top hairs and I want some shorter and more fine curls on the side of this character. So I'll go above the hair from guides node and I will add a curling operator. Just like before it applies the curls globally to the whole hair object and I can adjust some values like for example the phase I can make it finer and the overall magnitude I can make it bigger to make the hairs more curly overall. Now I will go back into my edit guides shape and I will add another guide channel and I will call it the long curls to define the curling channel which we will use for the middle of the hairs. If I go back to my curl node that I have just created I can go in this magnitude channel drop down and select the channel which we have just created. Again it will undo all the curls because the value is zero for for all of these hairs and it acts as a multiplier for this magnitude parameter over here. But if I go to my edit guides shape and restore the selection for the mohawk down the middle of the character by using the quick select set, I can now select the long curls channel in the channels drop down and adjust its channel value 
to 1. As you see, it only modifies the curls down the middle of the character and doesn't touch the other ones because the value for these ones is still 0. I can now play and adjust this value as much as I want and I, I can even go back and brush some of this curl so I can set the channel value to 0 and maybe reduce the curling down the edge of the mohawk while retaining the same values at the front. Maybe I don't want the front hairs to be as curly as the back ones so I can just reduce the curling for them and maybe reduce the curling for the hairs right at the back to have this kind of smooth transition. And instead of curling, let's actually freeze these hairs on the side of the character. So I can go above my curl node and add a freeze operator. And I'll set the default freeze amount to a higher, higher value so that we get a lot of distortion in our hair. But now I don't want the hair down the middle to be freezed because we already curled this hair. And just like before with all the other operators, I will repeat the same steps of going back to my edit guide shape. I will add a new channel called the freeze channel. And once I have added this channel, I'm going to go into my freeze node and use the amount channel drop down to select our freeze value. Again, it's going to be zero. And now I can go back into my edit guide shape and just paint the areas where I want the freeziness of the hair to happen. So I will increase this channel value to one just to make sure that we're increasing the freeze and not decreasing it. And then set our selection to the freeze channel. And then I can go and interactively modify the freeziness of these hairs by simply painting the areas where I want the hairs to be frizzed. And as you see also the guides, they change color from black to white to allow you to see exactly which areas are being affected by this frizz. And it doesn't have to be black and white, you can always modify these values to make them gray. So for example, some areas can be only partly frizzed, while others can be really messy. So for example, we can go and slightly mess up the hairs in the middle here, and we can really mess up the hairs down the back of our character. And the neat part is if now I want to adjust any other of these channels, I can simply select them. So for example, if I want to modify the length of some of these hairs down the back of the character, I can select my length channel, set it to zero, and just reduce the length at any point in the future. So you don't have to be planning ahead with the values that you choose. And in fact, I can have more edit guide shapes in my stack and each one can be modifying these values as well as adding or removing channels if I wanted to. And as a final touch, I will just go and select the strands over here and pull them together to make this top part of the hairs a little bit more like a blade. So I will select them and I'll use the scale tool to just scale them upwards like this and maybe pull them upwards a little bit as well. So there we have it. We have a hairstyle almost completely defined through procedural operators and the values of these procedural operators are local to different guides and they are being driven by the attributes that we attach to the hairs in the form of channels that are created in the channel dropdown and can be painted or adjusted by manually selecting different guides and setting the values. Throughout Ornatrix, all the different operators that you can apply here at the top shelf have this channel values selectable for different parameters. So you can go and explore and find the different aspects of the hairstyle that you can affect procedurally just like we did in this tutorial. Tutorial. So as a final touch, let me just go and assign a new material and I'm going to make it a V-Ray hair material. I'll bump up the render count for our hairs from 10,000 to maybe 30,000. And finally, I'm just going to create a quick render and see the awesomeness that we have just created. I hope you can use some of these techniques to define procedural hairstyles for your furry, feathery, or hairy characters without having to deal a lot with freehand styling tool, while at the same time leaving it in a state where you can always go back and change the history of the hairs by modifying their guide channel values, thus making your hair assets a lot more versatile and reusable. Thank you very much for watching.